If you mix with studio monitors, you have to realize that the room you mix in has an important factor on the sound that is coming out of your speakers. So that's why I want to show you this very good tool that I work with every time I mix music in my studio that will help my speakers to, to give me a more accurate frequency response. And in the end, that helps me to get better mixes that translate way better on other systems. Hey, what's up, my friend? The Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Hope you're doing well. Now, I'm excited to talk to you about this amazing tool that I work with when I mix music. And even more than that, I actually use this tool even on my computer when watching videos or listening to music without even working in Cubase. And I'm talking about Sound ID by Sonarworks. Now, I already made a Sonarworks a reference for video years ago because that was the old version that I've been working with for, uh, for years years, actually, uh, even like since recently, I just switched to the new version, like the latest version, uh, which is called Sound ID. And that was actually released more than a year ago, if I'm not mistaken. But I just upgraded to uh, this new version of the Sonarworks reference type uh, plugin and software, uh, which is great. And this is the one I want to talk about today and focus on uh, today. So now note that this video is sponsored by Sonarworks. They sent me a copy copy of the uh, Sound ID reference uh, plugin and software uh, for me to try out and also sent me this uh room calibration microphone there you go which i use with the measurement app that comes with uh, with sound id to measure my room and the way that works is by using this microphone you plug that into your sound interface go through the measurement software and the sound id measurement software is going to record uh, different measuring points from different location in your room okay and then it's going to analyze the whole thing and give you a kind of a correction uh, eq correction that will fit your room according to the speakers you are using. Which is great because by applying that software on your computer or straight in your DAW, it's going to give you like a flatter response coming out of your speakers, uh, which is great for mixing. Now, if you work on headphones, you can buy the uh, Sound ID reference for headphones only or you can use the one that comes for both speakers and headphones. And also there's an option to get the measurement microphone part of your kit if you want to, uh, which is very practical. Now, the whole measurement process took me like 20 minutes or so uh, to do the whole thing, which is not too bad. And it took like, uh, I think it was like 37 measurement points which is great. So it adds a lot of precision and ac accuracy to uh, the result, which is great. And the mic that comes with it is a reference measurement microphone that is designed to do this kind of work. You know, it's an Omni microphone. And uh, also on this one, and the one that comes with, uh, with Sound ID reference has a code on it. It's a code you enter straight into the measurement application. Um, and that will actually uh, upload a, um, an EQ curve preset that is actually for this exact microphone model that was sent to you, uh, which is great. It just gives a bit more accuracy and precision to the whole measurement and calibration process. And I'm serious when I say that I've been using the reference for version, the older version of the, uh, of the software for years, and that actually helped me to get my mixes to sound way more accurate on different sets of speakers and environment, okay, which is great. And now there's some very cool features that we have on the Sound ID version um, that were not on the Reference 4 version that I used to, to work with. Now there's two versions of the software. There's the uh, app version, uh, which you install on your Mac computer or Windows-based computer, and you use the Sound ID software as your main sound device output, basically. And from that software, uh, you, this is where you route the um, uh, the output of your interface in Sound ID, and everything falls in place, and you, uh, you're able to use Sound ID through your uh, PC computer or Mac computer. Uh, so I have a version of this, uh, the app version of Sound ID, uh, which is the one installed on my Windows computer. And as you can see uh, on the left side, I have my outputs um, that I uh, that I have on this uh, uh, this 
profile of Sound ID. Now, on my end, I have two sound interfaces connected to my computer at the moment. My AXR4 from Steinberg and also the uh, the Audient ID44 interface. And I have the same presets loaded on both outputs. I can add way more outputs if I want to. Um, and this is going to be located on the left and I can switch from one, uh, one uh, preset to the other. So I have one calibration preset uh, for my Atom T8V and also one for my Kali Audio uh, IN8 speakers uh, with sub. So I calibrated this one with a sub. And then we have the plug-in version, which is very similar to this one, uh, to the exception of uh, the, um, uh, the, the output presets that we have on the left side, since we're using uh, the one uh, that is set up within our DW. You can insert the sound ID on your mix bus as the last plugin of your chain, or you can do like I do on my end if you work with Cubase Pro and insert it as the last plugin in the insert section of the control room. If you're using it straight on your mix bus, don't forget to bypass the sound ID plugin before you bounce your mix. Now, if we look at the uh, plugin version, it's like it looks exactly the same uh, for the most part as the app version. So let's stick to this one for now. Uh, and now on top, I have the frequency response curves. Uh, so if I just click there, and I'm just gonna uh, deactivate the um, the calibration results. So this is the result given by the Sound ID measurement app uh, when I calibrated my uh, Kali Audio speakers. Uh, so that is the actual curve. So if I look briefly you know from like the mid-range is pretty much stable there's a tiny bump on the top end uh, and also a bump on the low mids you know bass frequencies low mids especially uh, and then I have a kind of a drop here and uh, this bump here in the low end uh, is due to my subs I might overdid the sub level uh, so if I do uh, remeasure my uh, my room with my Kali audios I'm just gonna bring down the sub a bit you know just to get a flatter response of that rating. And this is a cool thing about using this type of a plugin because you can actually do a quick uh, analysis of your room and if you can correct some stuff physically, you know, with some acoustic treatment or in my case, just by bringing down the sub, um, you can do so. You actually get a very good idea on the uh, room response that you're having, uh, which is great. Uh, so now the correction that Sound ID did, if I click on top, I'm going to bring that calibration because the one in, in the middle, if I go back here, uh, the one, the line in the middle is the flat response that I'm aiming to get. I'm going to click on calibration and they go back here and there you go. So the green line is the correction EQ that Sound ID made so I can get a flat response. Uh, and this is what I'm getting, which is great now i can manage that uh, the balance of the flat response uh, with the um, the on uh, the on processed signal if i want to by uh, bringing up and down the dry and wet signal so if i just uh, uh, want to bring down that correction uh, eq i can i can do so just by bringing down the balance between uh, wet and dry okay but i love to keep it at 100 percent now uh, if i look here that uh, bomb that i have on in the low mids um you know this is is probably due to uh, to what I have on my desk. You know, like studio desks or regular desks are going to produce some reflections. Uh, and uh, this is probably what's happening here. So a tool like Sound ID is going to be perfect to manage this bump. Okay, if we look here at the bottom, we have the flat target, which I am on right now. And we also have custom targets. So if, uh, if I don't like what I have here, I can actually uh, like add some, some EQ curves to the correction that I have here. So if I want to add a bit more bass or treble, or just want to scoop it to my taste, the mid-range, I can do so manually. You know, which can be practical, you know. I can also apply the calibration on specific bands of frequencies. Like if I want to focus on high frequencies, I'm going to bring up the high pass bar. Or if I want to focus on lower frequencies, I'm going to bring down the low pass bar. I can also play around with the high pass and low pass bars to focus on mid frequencies if I want to. Once you're done, you can also save your settings as a preset. So on my end, I try to keep that as it is, so it's not very useful as far as I'm concerned, but it can be useful for some. Now, the very cool feature of Sound ID is the translation check which is great. Check this out. I have a bunch of different types of uh, listening environments that, you know, that people use every day. Like a car, there's three car models <laughs> that I can switch from. And uh, let me just uh, have you listen to these. So now if I have you listen to the calibration that I have, it's not going to make a lot of sense because you're not in my room 
and not using the same pair of studio monitors as I'm using. Uh, but I'm still going to have you listen to how it sounds like anyways, but just put that into consideration. Okay, so if I bring and look for um, translation check and I click on car one, let's listen to uh, a car model. That's interesting. Uh, In-ear headphones, A-pods. A laptop. Now let's go with uh, a smartphone. Yeah, that's pretty much how it sounds like. <laughs> and then studio speakers, and this is pretty cool because we have access to the mix cubes. And you see the curve here, uh, the, the line that is in black is the frequency curve of these mix cubes. Really mid-range focused. And I talked about the mid-range before, how important the mid-range is. So this is a very good tool if you just want to focus on the mid-range when mixing. Uh, same for the NS11, which is basically the NS10s. And you see the frequency curve uh, from these NS10s. And even a TV, look at that. So there you go. So that is the translation check, which is very useful. But my favorite uh, uh, preset there are the studio speakers, uh, the NS11 and mix cubes. Very useful uh, to focus on the mid range when mixing. If we look on the right side, we can switch the left and right channels. Uh, we can mono the mix also, and we can simply mute the output level if needed. Now, if you want to try it out, you can actually download it for free uh, for a 21 day free trial. I'm going to leave the link down below. Now, before I wrap this up, uh, something important um, that I like, this is a personal opinion. Uh, sound ID reference or any types of room correction software is not going to replace acoustic treatment. This is very important. In my book, you need to have a minimum, at least, some basic acoustic treatment in your room to start with. And then you can fine tune things up uh, with something like Sonarworks, which is gonna bring your listening experience to the next level. And this is what it does on my side. I already have a very nice room with some very good acoustic treatment. And then I use Sound ID to get a way more flatter response. Now, don't forget that Sound ID is gonna work within your DAW and your computer. So when you're in your recording session using Cubase or any other DAW, and you monitor yourself without any latency using your sound interfaces software, meaning that you're bypassing your computer for direct monitoring, Sound ID is not gonna work because it's not gonna be installed in your sound interface. It's installed on your computer. So if you're monitoring yourself without going through the computer with direct monitoring through your sound interface, you're gonna have to bypass Sound ID. So this is kind of a drawback when it comes to these types of software. But if you monitor yourself through your DAW, like Cubase, uh, Pro Tools, and so on, you're gonna be fine. Your sound is gonna go straight from the Sound ID plugin and you'll have that calibration going on when recording. So that depends on the workflow you're getting. So there you go, my friend. This is Sound ID Reference by Sonarworks. Uh, again, amazing tool to work with. Now on your side, do you work with Sound ID, Reference 4, or any other types of uh, measurement software? Let me know down below. And also if you have any other types of comments or questions, leave everything in the comment section below. All right, my friend. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm gonna leave the link to Sound ID Reference in the description of the video. Down below. Until next time, take care and see you.